Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, welcome to Mindalia live streaming, where thousands of people around the world gather daily to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us, Angel Rivo, CEO, consultant, TV host, international public speaker and president of the Wisdom for Kids Foundation is co-hosting with our dear Sonny Chase. Sonny is not only the host of this show, but also the host of ABC Solutionary Sundays. She is the feature writer and chief strategist for Whole Lifetimes, the longest running conscious life magazine in America. Sonny is also a producer, a moderator and a mythbuster. Before starting with them, we want to remind you that Mindalia's mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world. And you can help us by subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment down this video, or sharing it with someone that you know that is gonna benefit of the content that we're gonna be talking here today. We also want you to collaborate with Mindalia with your own valuable content. And for that, you can go to our website. On the top, you're gonna find a link that says collaborate with Mindalia. That link is gonna take you to a form that you can fill out and our technical team will be getting in contact with you. You can collaborate with us in English through Mindalia TV English, as you know already, but you can also do it in Portuguese through Mindalia Televisao and in Spanish through Mindalia Televisión. Visit our different platforms, channels, Instagram pages, Facebook accounts. With that, you not only help us reach as much people as possible, but you also keep yourself updated on the beautiful content that we are sharing there on a daily basis. I'm not going to delay this any further, and I'm going to have the pleasure now to leave you with Angel, with Sonny, and a great, very special guest we have today, Dr. Sue Motor. Guys, welcome to Mindalia live streaming. The screen is yours. Thank you very much, Mirna, for this uh, wonderful introduction. And uh, welcome back, Sunny. Uh, what a blessing to be able to share the floor with you today. <laughs> Thank you so much. And this is such a celebration day, I cannot tell you. I've been waiting for this day. It feels about nine months, I think, I've known about what's happening today. And so it's happy birthday day to in a very special book. And that's why I have my candles and flowers and tea and treats. And uh, if I believed in balloons, I would have had them around me, but I don't. <laughs> so imagine <laughs> the orbs are all around us. And, um, you know, Angel, today we had such a funny experience of, of uh, Dr. Sue's practice because we had one guest scheduled today and then Dr. Sue's people had her scheduled and I thought I want to catch her magic carpet. And so I did a few of the of the uh, centering and grounding uh, procedures and processes that Dr. Sue teaches, Mula Banda and breathing and chatting with the team and everybody in three minutes. Let's meditate. Let's bring it in. What should we do? Should we disrupt? Should we go with the flow? Should we, you know, what should we do? And everyone agreed. And here we all are. So because of Dr. Sue, in many, many ways, we are going to have an incredible show today. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Exactly. And, you know, Dr. Sue is also a very good friend of mine, Dahlia. So we are extremely grateful uh, for the fact that, uh, you know, her and, and you, Sunny, and the universe has allowed us to to you know, be together and to talk about energy. And you were speaking about the orbs and we just have to be intentional to have the orbs around us. That's the only thing we have to do and the energy will just do the rest. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling myself the energy, probably uh, you're also feeling that energy. I'm feeling the excitement right now. I'm having chills <laughs> right now as I'm talking, I'm having chills. So there's, a, there's an amazing, there's an, there's an amazing aura and <laughs> being created right now. and. And uh, so, Sunny, please. Uh, yes, let's do it. I'm river dancing. It's the honor. The honor. <laughs> <laughs> I was even going to be singing songs and whatever. I may start singing when Iris eyes are smiling. You'll probably make me cry. So, but I, I'm going to do a quick introduction, and there's so many things we're going to drop in. But I want to um, honor Dr. Stu by letting you guys know a little bit about her, and then she's going to, you know, take us on a magic carpet ride that we will probably never forget. I'm sure that's true. And I just want to let you know that Dr. Stu is an international speaker, master of the best practice, which is a phenomenal thing we may talk a little bit about, a bioenergetic medicine and quantum field visionary. She's created delicious and phenomenal life-changing energy cord co code coursework, which I have done, and it is life-changing, and the best rock and body awake yoga. It's kind of wild with Sue because she does so many different things. It's sort of like, how is this possible? But it is possible in one person. <laughs> 
Her seminars, her retreats, sacred journeys are phenomenally beautiful. And Dr. Seuss appeared in um, movies and she's been on world stages and she's spoken everywhere and she's, you know, she's done incredible things. But the most important thing I think about her is just how original she is and how her information is, um, you know, I was chatting with people in the last week and from the Conscious Life Expo. It's like there's so much of the same saying going on. And it's so refreshing to have new because I feel like we're hungry for the ancient and a new way. And I believe that she brings it together in such a beautiful way that that we can, when we hear her words and do her practices, we can feel into the ancient truth of our real life and then reach for something new and fun and original. So let's bring her on, Myrna. <laughs> Enough of uh, adding already. <laughs> thank you. So welcome to Mindalia TV, um, uh, Dr. Seuss. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's a great joy to be here. I love you guys so much. And it's always, you know, a rare and amazing moment where we get to come together with this like mind, with this many like minds around the globe and and drop into a conversation that matters most. So I'm thrilled. I can't wait to see where we get to go today. <laughs> Excellent. And let me let me add something, Sunny, which is uh, you know, and, and we are kind of obsessed here on Mindalia TV, which is you know helping people. And I think that you know uh, everything that you just said, which is completely true, holds also true and, and makes uh, Doctor Sue even more extraordinary, given the amount, the thousands of people that she has helped. People need help today. People are suffering. People are in pain. People are confused, are frustrated. And she brings that light. And she brings the light and the opportunity to help the people in the thousands. And I think that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just wanted to add that before mm -hmm. you, you ask the first question to Dr. Yeah. Dr. Sue. <laughs> well, I thank you for that. Actually, Sue, is there anything that you want to sort of start with? That, and then I have some fun questions for you. But is there anything on your mind that you just want to share with our Mandalia peeps? Well, I just want to remind everyone that, that when we are in a state of suffering or we are in a state of lack or fear, or wondering if, it's, if the possibility is there for us to truly make a difference in our lives, when we hear these big concepts and these ideas that, that everything is good and that, that, that healing is possible and, and um, and that, that life is meant to be flowing and abundant. If, if someone is seating, uh, seating themselves or is seated in a place of not feeling that that's true or applicable for them, I just want them to understand that there's truly nothing broken and there's nothing missing and there is nothing wrong. It is oftentimes just a matter of not having the correct neurocircuitry in place to perceive our wholeness. And so our mind then starts running with things and writing stories about about what might be missing with me or or why me or feel separate in some way and and so while listening to our conversation the invitation is to simply realize that that if i could build more circuitry in my own system and i can then i might be able to perceive that what's being talked about is truly applicable to me too because there is nothing broken or wrong or missing with any individual on the planet. And it is time for us to recognize our wholeness and learn how to operate from that place in a world where that is not recognized and that is not the come from with most of humanity. And yet people who are dialing into this conversation are already on to the fact that there's something more that, that we have to uh, uh, allow in order for humanity to evolve with grace and ease the way that it is intended to. We're already in the mix or we wouldn't be having this conversation now. So I just want to offer the support and the recognition that I get that and that we're here to make that pathway more graceful and flowing and easy than it's ever been before. And it's time. Nature is on our side. So it's time for this evolution to happen. And the fact that we're coming together like this is a sign that that we're ready to bond together and uh, and allow that support to happen. Mm, thank you. Mm. Well, I was thinking about something recently where I was talking to people again after uh, after some different workshops and things like that. And just last night, I was chatting with uh, Yogananda's great nephew Sujan, which is uh, he's also a friend of the uh, uh, Mandalia and also someone I want to introduce you to. And I was talking to him about you, and he knows of you. And we're chatting about something that I really, really respect about you in the spiritual community. I'm just going to say it. There's sort of a 
there can be a sort of a spiritual um, entitlement and elitist kind of vibe, like they're sort of we and they and stuff. And I just love that you really address that, not even in a judgmental way with you, but the way that you describe and offer, uh, allow for us to move in the world is so uplifting um, and so like, you know, not putting a bubble around ourselves to protect us from the people. But so I just would love for you to kind of chat to that because I think it's so cool to kind of myth bust about this spiritual, you know, elitist gig wow. <laughs> and, and break through that one. Let us like, yes. okay. that one already. <laughs> you know, I could leave it to you to come up with an awesome way to kick out a conversation. This is fabulous. <laughs> so, you know, true spirituality is union. And so the idea that there's a hierarchical uh, uh, approach to spirituality is um, is kind of grossly misunderstood. Uh, actually, all that happens in spiritual evolution is a refinement of our consciousness. And when we begin that journey, we begin to refine into greater and greater subtle realms. And we immediately begin to recognize the sameness and the likeness between us and everyone, because ultimately there is only one of us here. So if we are tapping into, and, and quantum science is, is, is teaching us this as well, as spirituality has been speaking it all along, in the depths of the Vedas, in the depths of the oldest holy scriptures, uh, in the original writings of personal development and the processing of of uh, humanity's evolution in an, in an intentional fashion that everything references that there is there is only union there is only one mind there is one consciousness that is here compressed into this physical dimension and having the experience of many aspects of consciousness which looks like other people that we're engaging with and in reality all it is is the various aspects of our own consciousness that are finally finding its uh, itself and merging and unifying. So unity consciousness is us unifying all the pieces and parts of our own self. So the idea that there is the haves and the have nots or the no's and the no nots um, mm -hmm. is, is, a, uh, is a perspective that demonstrates a spiritual immaturity that we are birthing ourselves through. So the key is to not judge the judgers, okay? Or we're doing the same thing. The key is to, with compassion, hold the space for those who have stepped into a sort of spiritual arrogance, uh, unbeknownst to their own evolution and unbeknownst to, their, to themselves that that is their blockage. Uh, we have to lead with compassion right in and start to melt those divisive ways of, of being. And so, yes, there is a holy of holies and an inner sanctum that can only be approached when one has truly developed and quickened their consciousness in such a manner that they can perceive and act as if this is true, action into this. And there is a time and a place for that to be, um, to be uh, celebrated. And at the same time, the journey to that place is the spiritual practice that every human being should be in, meaning that there is zero tolerance for, uh, for judgment or for evaluation in, in a true spiritual community. It, there is only space for us to recognize ourselves in each other and to see that someone else's struggle is mine and my own celebration is theirs mm -hmm. and, and vice versa. That as we begin to operate this way, this idea that when you walk into an ashram or a temple or a yoga studio or a meditation community, if there is a sense that there are some, some that are more revered than others, then the immediate vibration needs to go to compassion rather than intimidation and to recognize that, that the person who can see that distinction is already part of the highest evolution. The, the bird's eye view on it is the seat of high consciousness. So if someone feels intimidated or feels that someone is being snubbish or offish in some way, the very first and most empowered thing that they can do that will shift that energy is to move not with pity, but compassion into the mix recognizing that they see something that someone else might not. And the greatest gift that they can contribute to that crowd, to that group, 
is, is to move in the grace of what they see and melt it with their own hearts rather than get upset, get intimidated, back off, not want to participate. It's these moments that we can step into what we're here to do, which is to create unity in a place of duality. And it's going to show up in every in every facet of our lives. So so the true spiritual practice is to dissolve the arrogance in in spiritual arrogance and uh, just allow it to not not allow it, not tolerate it, not allow it to exist by our own actions and loving presence. <laughs> we, Thank you. We are, all. Thank you. <laughs> we are, uh, Dr. Sue, we are so attached to our to being ourselves. Right. Um, yes. We're so attached to being ourselves. So we are really like the slaves of those chemical reactions that happen inside of us as soon as we started perceiving uh, this arrogance. And arrogance is a very strong word. I mean, just listening to the word chemicals start, you know, uh, and, and going yeah. through the body and generating probably uh, thoughts and, and reactions. How can we start leading ourselves with our own reactions? from a place of compassion. Yes, so this vibration of self-love comes naturally when we stop identifying as an individual separate self that needs to be defended or validated or proved in some way, that needs to fit into something. That's like asking a drop of water to fit into the ocean. It does, you know, there's no separation. It, it does not, not. And it's only our minds and our perceptions that hold us as a separate self that then needs to, to struggle to fit in and to try and to be loved and to earn some kind of validation or some kind of connection. So as we generate the chemistry in our own system that love and presence generates, when we allow the system to recognize, I feel here, I have a sense of self deep within, that if the internal environment becomes more significant than the external environment, and that means through the layers, like there is this external environment, and then there's this layer of the personality self that is seen and perceived as an individual separate self, and therefore has a pressure gradient uh, between the inner world and the outer world. It's a barrier of sorts. And as we allow ourselves to drop more deeply still into our deep core presence. The vibrational frequencies at that core presence house different energies, different chemistries thereby, different epigenetic uh, stimulation to the system, different signals going on inside of here that allow us to feel a sense of self that is whole, that is grounded, that is complete, that automatically belongs. It's a non-issue. It's not something we even strive for. It's just what is. And in that state, in the depths of our own deep soulful presence, what happens is our system kicks into a different set of circuits, one that is ancient and eternal, one that is inherent, the wisdom, the compassion, the love, the unconditionality that we all seek resides behind our personality, but we've been seated as the personality and looking to the outer world for those stimuli, for those signals, for those signs. And because we don't see them in a consistent fashion, we step into a state of fear. And the next thing you know, we're interested in validating our okayness and our separateness and our, in, in our personal identity. And then we get a shot of adrenaline or a shot of, of the, the fight or flight response chemicals that we've become addicted to. And we have a temporary sense of victory. And uh, it's, a, it's a broken record that just keeps recycling and recycling and recycling. And it's time for us to just drop back and become familiar with uh, a different set of chemistries, a different set of circuitries, a different flow of energy that allows us to have a, a consistent and unwavering, unwobbling perception of who we are without the external world having to prove or validate that for us. And so it's, it's coming home to the soul. It's training the mind to find the true self. When we train the mind to find us, then we're not identified as the mind. And as we train the mind to find us, we are identified as this true, essential, soulful presence that is just pure awareness, that can be bilocational. It can be aware of every aspect of humanity. It can be aware uh, anywhere and everywhere all the time. That's what we have to learn to cultivate. 
And when we do, we start to see the whole of humanity as the, the, the true the true self, the truth of who we are. We are presence itself in every variety of, of demonstration that it, that it reveals in, in this dimension, thereby giving us a sense of wholeness ongoing. That's, that is our destiny. Whoa. Well, I would like to add to this. This is so fun, Angel. It's like we're playing racquetball. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, I'll jump in. Um, lately, I've been studying. I love to study different things, as, you know, with art, with botany, with different things that then I seem to bring to the human condition. And lately, I've been studying about trees and seeds and stuff like that. And I learned that seeds, when you plant seeds in the ground, even though let's say there are 10 of them, um, pop them in the ground with the microbes and the water and the sun, some will choose to grow and some will not. Some will wait. Cherry seeds for cherry trees can wait 100 years and then decide to grow. And I was thinking about that with us, you know, as people and how in the again spiritual community we're talking so much about oh we have no stoppages and we can do whatever we want and you know different things that people say like nelson mandela we're only afraid of our greatness i'm paraphrasing and so i was wondering if you would like to talk to sort of that you know that that it's god really that chooses that seed or that seed chooses to grow and so what is it in us you know some of us activate earlier or later or feel like never until the last five minutes. And you know what, can you help us grow? <laughs> can you help us activate our seed? <laughs> yes. you know, in my experience, it is that right timing happens on a vibrational frequency level for humanity. We think that it's the right time, but it's actually a vibrational recipe. There is a vibrational frequency wave that is moving through the human life span, through the human life experience. And if we are scattered and dispersed with our consciousness, it takes time for us to have enough experiences that one by one by one start to pull us together and quicken us into the combined energies that are required to, to root and sprout and rise. And what I have found is that if people learn how to pull those life experiences together ahead of time, consciously and intentionally doing so, rather than using the default mechanism of the lifespan to depend upon gathering those awarenesses, those learnings, those quickenings, if we can, and we can, that's what I teach, learn how to pull our at the aspects of our self our wholeness our consciousness together into the same environment into a quickened state automatically consciously intentionally we can we can cut through time and be there in the now moment uh, uh, ahead of time as as uh, as we're speaking about it and so when that recipe comes together, then we sprout, we rise, we move. The soul begins to awaken and emerge and come out into this life and have the contribution to society that it is here to contribute. And to also, by doing so, receive the experience that it came in to have. So it's a give and a receive at the same time. It's it's a threshold that's opening and the exchange is constant. So it's equally important for us to receive as it is to give, but there are processes that we can do ahead of that that will allow this sprouting to occur in the now moment rather than it taking an entire lifetime for us to awaken to why we came. So as a culture, we tend to move to the elderly to ask them, you know, impart your wisdom in all of your life. Uh, what has mattered most in your, in your many, many years, in your, in your eight and nine and 10 decades of living on the planet, what have you seen that matters most? What, what do you now know that you did not 
you know, half a lifetime ago. And we, we go to the elders when we have the wisdom to even go to the elders. And, and you know, we live in a society that's kind of not doing that anymore. But, but if we were, uh, what they say matters to us because in a linear perspective, they have lived it and we can glean from their experience. And this is what the indigenous tribes always did and they were honoring the elders constantly. And so we can create an elder uh, out of a, a, a new generation in much less time if we allow this quickening to occur in our consciousness sooner rather than later. So I feel that what it is that causes the seed of the soul to sprout when it does is a vibrational mix of readiness that happens when we are grounded in our bodies, when we are integrated in our mind and our body and our breath, when we're allowing the billions of bits of information that are bombarding this single point of consciousness that we are every millisecond to land in the gut and for that information to rise to our hearts and for that information to be filtered up to our consciousness and allow us to operate as the cosmic being that we are now, when we can learn to do that, and it's not hard to do, it's by nature, it's by design that we would do that. We've just been dispersed and distracted and not trying to do that. So as we learn to do that, we create the perfect environment sooner rather than later for that sprouting to happen for each and every individual on this planet. And if we do that together, uh, the power is exponential because it's refracted back and the energy fields find a coherence that is immediate. And we support one another in this invisible manner that is profound, as profound as, as the, the God's timing that we reference when we think about, don't know, it's just in God's hands. You know, there is an active role that we can play to catch that wave that is meant to grow and evolve us each and every one. And I, I actually, I have to say that when you were talking about what happens when, you know, you're doing this and you are surrounded by other people and you are actually fed with the energy of other people, I have to say, I have to confess something, uh, Dr. Sue, which is related to the personal life of Sunny, which is every time that she spends some time with you, she comes back to the show with so many magic, magic experiences <laughs> that, she, that she spends a lot of time sharing with us and with our audience. I have to say that. So when you were explaining it, all those moments of authenticity uh, of uh, Sunny come to my mind. So absolutely, I couldn't agree more with, with, with what you just said, uh, Dr. Sue. But let me ask you a question. The, today is a very, very significant moment in your life because you are launching another of your masterpieces. And your masterpiece is actually uh, uh, somewhere around you. I, I'm seeing it in the background. Oh, so yeah. feel yeah. free, feel free to show it to our audience and to, to tell what does what does the energy code mean for you and for um, and for uh, our audience, uh, Doctor Sue. Mm. Angel, thank you. It yeah, this this the energy codes is uh, is the book that I've written and it's the first book that I've written. I there has been a a transmission that happens when I teach, when I speak, and when I lead meditations and and, and uh, just kind of channel what's happening. That's a vibrational live experience. And I've always just been drawn to serving in that way. And so many people were asking, you know, could you, could you give us a book? Can you, can you write some of this down so that we can study it and go back and forth and work with these concepts? And so I finally uh, did that. And it finally felt in this past couple of years that, that it was, it, I was able to do that. And, and, create in a linear fashion this very quantum conversation and make it very user friendly. And so that was my, my point. My number one point was sometimes when I'm speaking, the conversation can get very expansive very quickly. And the one thing that I would want to do with a book is to break it down and make it very practical, pragmatic and linear in the how to's idea so that someone can learn how to do what I'm talking about, how to implement, how to benefit from it on a personal level immediately, whether I ever meet them or not. When people come into the room and we're having a, a workshop, it there's a transmission that happens and people are transformed 
And I'm so humbled and honored to be a participant in that, to be, to be playing a role, to facilitate that. And, and there are people that, that have a difficult time coming to where I am. And so the book felt to me like another form of service that I could provide for humanity. And I'm, I'm thrilled that it is now, that, that it's birthing in this moment and that the world will have access uh, to this in, in a form that they can reference back and forth through it and hear it again or interpret it. And it comes with images and all kinds of practical applications of how to. It also has video links in it that you can go to the computer and dial in a link for what I just taught for a video demonstration of exactly how to do practices for gathering these parts of our wholeness back together again so that it doesn't take our entire lifetime to, to gain this capacity of wisdom because we're inherently made of that and it shouldn't take our entire lives to find it. And, and so, so that's the point of the book and that's the, the energy and the effort uh, behind the project and the love that is infused into it is all of the essence that I feel when I'm channeling. But the whole idea is, you know, let's infuse that in between the words and, uh, and allow it to unpack in someone's right time, in their right pace, in their, in their own imagery and how they can work with it and infuse it into their own lives is what matters most. And so, uh, and so I finally got that and, and wrote the book <laughs> for that reason. Well, and what I want to say about that, that we are so grateful and I'm so grateful and I've read it twice and um, it is called the energy codes, seven step system to awaken your spirit, heal your body and live your best life. And I also like to add to it and find your way home, which always makes me cry, but it's because reading this book, um, I mean, doing the work, yeah, it has been life changing and in ways that are, have felt very effortless and also in the way that I'm sort of not even aware until later, like, whoa, that was going on with me. And now it's just kind of fallen away. Whoa, I used to feel like that. Now that just doesn't even trigger me anymore. I mean, and I've done a lot of work in my life, you know, because I'm older than some people. <laughs> so I've done a lot of stuff. Uh, but doing this, <laughs> doing this work uh <clears throat> and see how young I look now. It's all because of Dr. Yeah, fabulous. I <laughs> how old is old? To, you know, to an eternal being, how old is old? I don't know. It's exactly. the well, I, I'm, just, I'm, just I'm embracing the elder, you know. Uh, but what I, I said to Sue at one point, Dr. Sue and Angel, I don't know if I shared this with you, but um, reading this book, it really allowed me. That's why I say finding our way home because through this book, there are many elements to the book. There are practical aspects, there are spiritual aspects, there are uh, stories, there's magic infused in between and, and mystery and, and you know yumminess. And um, finding, again, a lot of us, Angel, you were saying earlier about how we're in a lot of pain and we're, you know, there's just a lot of the, the nervous system of America in particular and other places, of course, is just, Ooh, you know, going through some stuff and being able to realize that that uh, we get disrupted. We live in different places. We, if there are people who are refugees, or you know, there's just so much going on. And to be able to find our way home, to be able to understand that we even maybe, like in my case, didn't really feel 100% at home. I moved a lot in my life and I thought, oh, that's great on one hand because it made me very, you know, flexible and all that kind of stuff and yet it's like where is home and then realizing you know there is no place like home like we are home mm -hmm. and this book really can bring us home so i just want to say that mm -hmm. you know thank you for for speaking to it from that perspective it that is definitely what happened in my life i landed home and the home is our eternal presence. It is the fact that we are pure presence itself. And that as we start to train the mind to come into this centered point within our own little living laboratory here, it has an opportunity to settle. And when the mind settles, it can move up above this 
ceiling, this rapid moving thinking mind that the ceiling fan of, you know, spinning so fast, you would never stick your finger through it because it would, you know, cut it off. And so we're trapped here underneath this rapid moving mind. And, and so what we're doing is slowing the mind down so that we can get out and experience ourselves in a greater fashion. And when we get out there, what ultimately happens is just pure presence occurs. We recognize, we, we, have the experience of stillness, of wholeness, of, of that pure presence that, that we're speaking of. And that is home, that is our coming home. And because we're using the internal laboratory here to do it, we have a constant now new recognition at the conscious and the subconscious mind's level that home is here, it's in here and it feels completely expansive and there's nothing missing, there's nothing wrong, there's nothing to go achieve and accomplish. It's all right here. And anything that I engage in is for my delightful experience on this planet. It's not a, a means to survive or to fit in or to, to grow or to achieve. And ironically, achievement happens the less you try, the more it occurs. If you're focused in your consciousness and you've landed that, right here at home. So the book is called The Energy Codes, and it's a codified way of mastering your energy field and your energy flow. And it's important for everyone to realize that while we're so interested in the nervous system and the biochemistry and the epigenetics of it all and how it all works in the body, that is a byproduct of the master system. The nervous system is, a, is, a, is, is subservient to the master system. The master system is the energy system. The energy system built the nervous system in the developing embryo. That's how important it is. So if we can learn to manage ourselves at the energetic level, we have an automatic influence on the nervous system without even trying. So it's not a matter of just reframing our beliefs and, and you know, creating new habits and those kinds of things. That, that's true and important. But there is another system that if we can animate it, if we can awaken at that level, the, the, the beliefs, the, the, the obstacles, the circumstances, the unresolvedness starts to take care of itself. And so we start to heal exponentially instead of in a linear fashion, one belief after one belief after one belief, one experience forgiving it after one forgiveness after one forgiveness. It happens quantumly. And Ooh. this is what we want to have occur in our, in our culture because we need it. We need it on a quantum level. It's time. And not that there's any problem. What's happening culturally is a stir that's happening right before a hatch occurs. You know, the egg starts to vibrate and there is turmoil. And then a beak comes right out through the eggshell and a birthing into a new world occurs. But that baby chick feels crazed inside that egg right before it sets itself free. And that's kind of what's going on with humanity right now. We're just birthing into our next dimensional version of ourselves, which is more holistic. It's more um, otherworldly as we would reference it. It's more divine and comprehensive. It's cohesive and coherent. It's more loving and unconditional. We're birthing a unity in the face of extreme duality. And it's right on time. It's right on schedule. And inclusive. <laughs> And inclusive. Let me ask you a question that comes from a parent, from our audience. The question is, how can a child, not knowing anything about quantum science, know that matter is not really solid and how to feel the emptiness within it? Well, that's quite a question. Sweet. So I uh, got to love this. I love your audience. This is amazing. No wonder I love coming back here. <laughs> um, so, so love is the answer. Love is the answer. When the child learns what love feels like and to recognize love, which it learns through demonstration and the presence of the love vibration through the parent and through the adults and through the experience of, of being in that, that, that nurtured nest. And if they're not in a nurtured nest, they will find it because it's the soul's destiny. It's made of love. We are made of love and the mind, body and breath, 
collectively can generate nothing but love. That's what happens when merging occurs, when we reunite these aspects of our, of our wholeness. So if someone is born into an environment where love is not obvious, where love is not present in, in such a, uh, an intensive fashion that the child learns, oh, this feeling is what's true and this feeling is what's called love and I am that. If, if they're not born into that environment, their soul's destiny is here to discover it on its own. It wants that environment. It's chose. It's what I call the bus stop conversation and I wrote about it in the book. And it has to do with how we choose, what we choose to land in, our life experiences are set forth in motion before we come here. And we play an active role in that, in that conscious uh, collective that lands as our our destiny, our life experience. And so uh, if we land in an environment where that obvious soul love is not present, it is because the soul is ready to take it on, the, the process of awakening, birthing itself onto itself. And in the environment where there is a loving parent that wants to make sure that, that their children are exposed to this and they wanna know how do I do that and how do I teach my child about love that doesn't make them attached to me for that love, but lets them recognize that my demonstration of love is here to teach them about the love that is them, that they are, that is inside of them as we would we commonly reference it, but it's actually what they're made of. And so the parent wants to provide the experience to the child and the instruction or the invitation for the child to discover what it feels like when they're exhilarated, what it feels like when they're, when they're being loved or what it feels like when celebration has occurred and they're lit up in whatever form of delight that children naturally do, that, that we share with them to feel in your body what you're feeling right now instead of associating it with this toy that they were given or this experience that they get to go do on this particular day or this party that they get to participate in. While all of those things are activating and stimulating to these vibrational frequencies that are so important and create memory bank patterns that are layers of energies that we can draw upon forever. It's very important that at that same moment that we also acknowledge for the child that what they're feeling right now is the activation of something that resides inside of them. And it's not the party or the toy or the gift or the circumstance that is giving them that experience. It's just that that has ignited that experience inside of them. And by making that distinction for kids just as early as they're a little bit earlier actually, then they're able to understand the conversation as we can perceive and get feedback. Begin the conversation before you think they can hear it because they can hear it on a cellular level when they're in the womb. There is zero limitation to what the soul can perceive. And the sooner we speak soul to soul with our children, the sooner that wisdom, that eternal wisdom can surface in them and come out and be the guiding force in that child's life. But the fact that we withhold and we only speak about elementary things and we, we keep them contained in a box, keeps them contained in a box and it keeps them honoring their personality self that's dependent on the external world longer than it needs to. And it adds decades on to their process of ever waking up because we've, we've innocently held them in a state of unknowingness, of, of incapacity or inability or insufficiency in some way. And it infuses all kinds of circuits that they, that they then later have to undo and recognize for themselves, they do have the ability to get this. They do already know, they do feel, they can feel, it is safe. These kinds of things should be inherently awake in our children as they grow up because we've led them to know this. We've shown them how and spoken to them as if it was true all along. And then they build the circuitry for that perceptive field. And the next thing you know, they're living as an awakened being and they're only five, they're only 10, you follow? So. 
So how does the mother instill this in the child? By telling the child to reference what they're feeling in their body and teaching them instantly. That feeling is what you're made of. And this just turned the lights on. This thing that happened just turned the lights on. Now those lights are on. And you can tap that feeling anytime you choose, whether tomorrow you get to go to another party or not. You get to have the party on the inside and bring it to the mix, uh, regardless of what's going on in your external circumstances. Beautiful. So to to uh, elaborate on that, or that was maybe, but the the idea of our judgment of emotions, I really love where you play with that because I feel like people really do get into the the is it a good emotion or a bad emotion? You know, it's just certain emotions, and I think um, I love how you address that because I think it's very freeing. At least it's been for me. So you know, do you want to chat about? how it's cool with you that we just feel it all and, and then get on with it already. <laughs> it's not really cool. You know, Sonny, it's necessary. It is so necessary that we start embracing every vibrational frequency that passes through our system and, and have zero judgment on any of them. You know, that's where it starts. We judge on the inside and so therefore we create a judgmental world on the outside because the outer world is a reflection of our own consciousness. So we think we're living in a judgmental world that's judging us, but it is 100% a reflection of our own judgment of what's going on here, our own categorizing of this works and that doesn't, and this is good and this is bad, etc. All because we were taught that certain energies like guilt or shame or fear or anxiousness or these names that we've put on these vibrational frequencies have created a prejudice and we inherently then start to push them away or try to outrun them or we outperform them and then we start defending this isolated world of perfectionism that has kept those energies at bay we start defending it to keep them at bay and then we become so conditional that we're squeezing the life out of our own experience and we don't even realize that's what we're doing. All because someone told us that we should be ashamed, whatever that means. You should, you, you know, shame on you or, or, or you're not bad or, or you're not good or we don't do those kinds of things around here. All of this creating this confusion in the consciousness and creating duality right in that moment. Here's the interesting thing. Shame and guilt and, and, uh, sadness, depression, just which is just prolonged sadness, compression, uh, prolonged compression of the energy field creates depression. All of that is happening as a byproduct of people not being in touch with the fact that every vibration that passes through them is a part of, a, of, a, of an entire spectrum. And every aspect of that spectrum is required for wholeness to exist. So those heavy, deep energies are anchoring energies. They ground us, they root us. When you embrace your own sadness, you send roots down into the earth, it, you know, symbolically speaking, that allow the tree to grow taller. And if without those deeper roots, this, this tree can't grow taller. And if it did grow taller, it would just fall over because there's no root system to really hold it. So as we learn to embrace these energies and we stop naming them, it's one of the things that I talk about in the book is that if we stop naming them and just start feeling them, we come present to them. And when presence is allowed to access those heavier vibrational frequencies, it starts to anchor and it starts to, to have basically a sense of, you know, I don't, it doesn't matter what happens after this, after this, I can handle anything. You know what? I remember when, when my mother passed, I, you know, I was not ready for that. I, I did not, couldn't imagine life without her. She was my best friend. She was so unconditional with me. She was it. And and here she was, gone. And, and as I collapsed into that experience, the, the rootedness that occurred as a byproduct of my pain is what allowed me to recognize this is what we have to do. I had had this awakening experience prior to this, but, but her loss drove me into my heart and deep into my core. The loss of her, the apparent loss of her, drove me into my core in a fashion that I had not been since my great illumination. And so on a very human level, it embodied me in a way that was, that was new, that was, that was next, that was the frontier of what was left for me to experience after this big exalted experience that I had, which I speak about in the, in the introduction of the book and, and lay that out for people, what happened there. So, so in that, um, I recognize that 
experiencing our grief, experiencing our sadness, experiencing. Then later I was able to experience my own guilt, my own shame for other aspects of my life that, that had unfolded along the way in a judgmental world, in, in a brilliant but judgmental world that I grew up in, which most of us did. So, so, so in that, what happens is I began to, what happened for me was I began to realize that every single one of these emotional states have equal value. And as I began to allow them all to be here without any kind of story attached to them, they began to serve the grounding and the integration of my own full system. And my consciousness was able to expand even more because there was nothing to hide or to be relative to. There was only wholeness and fullness available. I was accessing unconditionality in my own system. And that's what allowed me to start seeing the world in this unconditional fashion as well. So every one of us has the capacity to do this. And this is where self-love comes from. It's not about loving yourself in spite of your uh, shortcomings. It's about being present with every single feeling that has ever passed through you. And, and those that are still yet to be embraced, they keep coming back. We keep experiencing experiences to give them an opportunity to come up and to come out so that we're not packing them inside of us and trying to hide them and outrun them uh, or outperform this idea that there's something in there that I'm, I'm hoping no one ever sees is there's no one out there to see it. It's all us. It's all one. So we have to learn to embrace that. And as we do, what happens is the greatest love possible, a cosmic love, a universal love, births out through us that allows us to be present with everything. And then we're a force of nature. We're a force of cosmic law in those circumstances. And there is nothing that can exist in the presence of us. We melt everything into possibility when we're, when we're living in this state of union uh, within ourselves, judging nothing that happens, nothing. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, we, we have to wrap it up, unfortunately, in the quantum field, there's no linear time, right? But unfortunately, our, our time here is linear. So I think, I think maybe we could we could uh, have a challenge for our next uh, interview, uh, Sunny, with Dr. Sue, which could be, let's try to make the time the less linear possible for our audience as well. <laughs> so we can we can be with uh, with her and 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 you know, feed our soul with her wisdom, oh, uh, you know, yeah. for, forever. But, you know, so how can we find you all? Uh, how can we find you online and where can we buy the book, Dr. Sue? Uh, yes. Well, you can come to my website. It's drsuemorter.com. Uh, and, and then you can add on to that. It's drsuemorter.com. And then slash order the energy codes and if you go there, you'll be able to order the book on, online, but you also get additional meditations and classes that I've taught and special gifts that I'm trying to just celebrate in this moment of the launch and, and everything that is happening. And so uh, by doing so, you get a little extra stuff, uh, gifts and uh, celebrations that come along with the book itself. Thank you very much for being with us today and for being so many amazing things in this oh, world and helping so many people really thank you very much for being here with us in my dahlia today it is my great joy i absolutely love you the vibe of being here with you is ex it's exquisite it's exactly what the world needs and so thank you so much for what you guys are doing to pull all of this this conversation together all of the time and for oh. having me on as a guest is you know a great joy so anytime you oh. say, you say when, we'll make it happen. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And I mean, add, oh, thank you. I know you're going to ask where people can find me, but I just want to add one tidbit. Of course. For people, um, today we have time on March 31st for anybody in LA or any area in LA, you know, anywhere you are close in California, come to Agape because Dr. Sue is being, actually Michael is hosting Dr. Sue. So she's going to be there for both services. She's doing book signings. She's doing an amazing workshop after, and it's only 44 bucks and it is 
believe me, it's worth, well, there's no, there's, it's priceless. So I really, really wish people could do that. And then also you can um, live stream it. So agapelive.com, you can find out about it. And it's a great way for any of us out there who know, already know Dr. Sue's work to invite other people to come who like may not really know or get it or whatever. Um, it's like super user friendly. <laughs> so I love for people to do that. And um, you can find me on Solutionary Sundays on ABC and here next week and uh, in Whole Life Times and uh, just so, by the way, I would like to also offer something to people. If you can't afford to come, <clears throat> I want to pray for you guys to come. I really mean it. Uh, so my email, oh, God, it's getting me all of a sudden. My email is sunny at letsimagine.live. And if you want to come and you can't afford it, either send something. Oh, God, keep it together, Sunny. If you, you can either send a note to Mandalia TV or send something to me. And I will pay for you to go. So just come on, guys. Just no excuses. Just come already. <laughs> wow, awesome. hey, you're amazing. You're so amazing. Daniel, thank you. Thank you. you. Know, I, want, I want. I just know there's so many out there who will love to be coming. And then you know, then yeah. So let's do that. Let's okay. bring it. People. Come on. Let's dance in the streets. Let's celebrate. <laughs> I'm so honored and excited that this book is out in the world. I just can't even tell you. Celebration time today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sunny. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, well, this is a Angel Rebo. This was another amazing uh, show with Sunny. Uh, extremely special to have Dr. Sue again. Incredible journey today. Brief, but incredible. Um, and this is Angel Reba with my Dahlia TV. Thank you very much, everybody, for being with us today. We, uh, we hope that you enjoyed our show as much as we did today. We yeah. hope to see you real, real soon. Another incredible show with Sunny Chase. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.